Good morning, everyone. I would like to start this morning by thanking my BizStarts colleagues for this recognition and the opportunity to share um, an abbreviated version of my story with you. It's a huge honor, first of all, to be here alongside uh, George Dalton. Um, we all know that he's a legend. Um, for me, he's what I like to call my MVM. He's my most valuable mentor. And uh, he's a dear friend, and he's just an all-around great guy. So thanks for all you have done to help Southeastern Wisconsin, George, over the years. And thanks for all you've done for me personally. I care about you a great deal. Thank you. <laughs> As a starter, um, I thought that I'd share a statistic that Dan shared with me about a year ago. And it was published in Michael Gerber's book, The E-Myth, and it reads, every year over one million people in this country start a business of some sort. By the end of the first year, at least 40% of them will be out of business. Within five years, more than 80% of them, that's 800,000, will have failed. Well, most of you in this room probably know that entrepreneurs are wired in such a way that we rarely recognize risk the way others do. As a matter of fact, we pretty much always just see opportunity. Could be a blind spot, but I disagree with that theory. Um, and while we are up against some pretty tough odds, I maintain that the only people that never fail are those that never try. So I thought I'd use my time today to give you some specific insights how, on how I think I increased my odds for success. Like a snowflake, or like a fingerprint, the beginning of each business is unique. No two stories are the same. And of course, I have mine, and George has his, which you'll hear about in a minute. Um, Zizzo Group started in my basement 15 years ago. Uh, I can tell you it was quite a fiasco. I was 29. I had just had my first son. Um, I had seven people that had keys to my home and were coming at all hours of the day and night because one of our largest clients was a retailer that uh, was headquartered in Seattle and had stores all the way up to Anchorage, Alaska. So it was um, <laughs> just a very crazy time. I haven't thought about it in a while. And as I did so in preparing these remarks, I thought um, it's just a good thing that I was too young and naive and inexperienced to know any better because <laughs> I don't know if I could have done that again. Um, but anyway, as I've evolved as an entrepreneur and as I've matured as a business person over the years, I've come to believe that the best way to learn and to continue to sharpen my instinct is through experience. You know what I'm talking about, that wide range of experiences. Um, it's those exhilarating highs when you close a big deal. Or it's wrestling down those fears that um, make you want to curl up in a ball for a day or sometimes maybe even for a week. Um, chance encounters that you're exposed to with some extraordinary people. Um, isolation. Maneuvering through challenges and accomplishing milestones that you never even imagined you could, that you never imagined existed. Risking it all. Losing. Rebuilding winning, and so on. So those things definitely keep me going. Um, but what else? What else has really hit me over the years that I thought I could share with this group of entrepreneurs today? Well, of course, I hold myself to those kind of standard measures um, of success, sales, gross profit, EBITDA, number of employees, etc. cetera. Um, but over the last several years, I have grown into a place where I'm able to focus on what I call my personal success metrics. And you know what? As I've taken a step back and I've looked at what personally drives me to get up and do this every day, I've learned that the novelty and the thrill of building Zizzo Group hasn't worn off for me yet. As a matter of fact, sometimes I'm driving into my parking garage and I still pinch myself. I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe that I do this every day. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful luxury that um, being an entrepreneur affords you is that um, ability to just really sink into your role as an entrepreneur, to sink into your role as a CEO, in my case of a relatively fast-growing company, um, and find that it's not overwhelming and it's not a drag. It's 
ultimately what I am. And being an entrepreneur and being a part of Zizzo Group ultimately really completes me as a person. In addition, I can't say enough about how good judgment um, and your own ability to trust your own good judgment drives success. I've learned to check my judgment against many guiding principles. Um, I tried to whittle it down to four that I thought were key so I could share them with you uh, quickly today. The first is um, the idea that when you're making tough decisions, you should do what's right. When I started Zizzo Group, it was because I had to make a life-changing decision for the right reason. Um, at that time, I was working at my dream job. I was marketing director of the journal Sentinel. I won't get into it, but I went through a very calculated, um, long path to get that job, and I pegged it in 1994. There's a bunch of journalites today here that I got to catch up with. That was very, very fun. Um, I really loved it there. I always wanted to be in newspaper marketing. As a matter of fact, now I work for about 20 different newspapers around the country and a bunch of TV stations and internet properties as well. So taking the leap and doing the right thing has afforded me the opportunity to exponentialize what I really enjoy doing in marketing. Um, but after just a short while at my time at the Journal Sentinel, my father was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer and he only had a couple of months to live. <clears throat> Pardon me. So. This was just really a total shock, came out of left field, not something that anybody in our family ever anticipated. Um, and I tried to keep doing my job and I tried to take care of my father and I just figured out very quickly I couldn't do both uh, well. So I resigned from the Journal Sentinel and I uh, formulated Zizzo Group. At that time it was just a shell entity that I could um, use to have a name and to run some freelance marketing consulting work through. Um, in order to spend time with him. So the advice that I'd like to pass along to all of you from this moment in my entrepreneurial journey is that at those most uncertain times, when you've weighed all the practical considerations and you really don't know what's going to happen as a result of an important decision that you have to make, you can find direction by following your heart, by listening to your gut, and ultimately just doing what's right. The next idea that I'd like to share with you is one of having no regrets. And um, in my case, about a year after that resignation time, my father died. And <clears throat> excuse me, I couldn't change what happened to him, but I knew when that moment passed um, that I had done everything that I could do to help him. Um, I spent a lot of time with him, and I truly did not have any regrets. As entrepreneurs, we make judgment calls all day long. Some are easy and some are not. I didn't have any experience running a marketing firm um, or any business for that matter. And many of the really tough decisions I've had to make about the business, about me, about my family, my employees, my sales activities, investments, clients, and all sorts of things of that nature have very long-term impact. But when it comes right down to it, I know I am making the right call regardless of the outcome regardless of the risk or the potential, and so on, if I'm able to be true to myself and have no regrets as a result. All right, I have a question. How many of you out there subscribe to the notion that perseverance pays off, that sometimes it takes a lot of no's to get to a yes? I saw one hand. There's hope. There's hope for all of you. A lot of hands went up. Um, because I think if you think about it, the opposite is actually true. Um, and that brings me to my guiding principle number three. And that is the idea that yes comes fast and no takes forever. In my case, many of my best business dealings, acquisitions that happened, development of intellectual property, putting together long-term multi-million dollar client relationships, finding the right long-term hires, They've culminated very quickly. These quick yeses didn't surprise me because I knew going into those conversations that my instinct was that they were the right fits, that the moving pieces came together very easily and the momentum behind those deals never lost any steam. Yet with most of my no's, those aggravating deals, 
those bad relationships and the ideas that fell apart. Um, if I think about them, I had a bad vibe about their viability very early on in those discussions and in the processes that led up to the no. And um, I'd spend a lot of time spinning my wheels, attempting to overcome glitch after glitch and try to figure out why it should be. Um, and frankly, I'd spend a lot of time getting to that point of no. So I've had a lot happen to me and to my firm very quickly. I've been fortunate to enjoy a lot of yeses, and I've been fortunate to learn from a lot of no's. Um, but most of all, I've learned how to sharpen my instinct and trust my judgment. So I want to leave you with an idea that yes comes fast, and no takes a long time. The last approach I'd like to share with you is one of taking an outward in approach. And um, as entrepreneurs, I think that this is something we really need to embrace. We have to shift from what we want to say in order to sell um, to a place where we're saying what people need to hear in order to buy. Um, the best way to do this is by being in touch with the marketplace. And George Dalton was a master at this. He still tells me, Annie, are you going out and you're visiting with all of your CEOs all around the country? They're buying you. I get this from him every time I have breakfast with him at Perkins or lunch at the Olive Garden. And so I'm sure you're going to hear a little bit more about this when he speaks next. It's, it's true. Stay in touch with your marketplace. Um, being in marketing, I've found you know, hundreds of ways to grow the firm by matching the needs of the marketplace to our fearless entrepreneurial culture and company. But I thought it might be helpful to highlight just a couple here so that you can think about deploying them as well. I have six of them. Uh, the first is committing to marketing. Look at that as a key leg on your business stool. Surround yourself with good marketing people. Surround yourself with good accounting people. Surround yourself with good lawyers. Prioritize, strategize, and budget for marketing so that you can define and tell your story before somebody else tells it for you. Next, build and deliver on a great reputation. This will build your brand and it will build your pipeline. Don't be nervous about acquisition. Um, look at ways to grow organically by acquiring that complementary business or ways to develop strategic partnerships. Hire the best people. Pay them well, because when it comes down to your talent, you're going to get what you pay for. And then treat them well and give them a stable work environment to be comfortable in and productive in and to develop their career paths within. Maximize your technology, invest in it, and keep it current. And then lastly, and very importantly here in uh, southeastern Wisconsin, support the Biz Starts mission and get involved with our community. Uh, take the time to do good and take the time to figure out how you and your company can help make southeastern Wisconsin a better place to grow and run our businesses and to raise our families. In closing, I have a little blurb that I picked up somewhere along the way. It's inspired me over the years, and I like to share it when I get to speak to groups like this. So um, I hope you'll indulge me. Each day, you can choose to be in a good mood, or you can choose to be in a bad mood. When something bad happens, you can choose to be a victim, or you can choose to learn from it. Life is all about choices. Entrepreneurship is all about choices. And when you cut away all the noise, every situation is a choice. You choose how you react to situations. You choose how people will affect you. You choose to be in a good mood or a bad mood. The bottom line, it is your choice how you live your life. Well, I've made the choice to embrace my entrepreneurial journey. I work hard, I sell hard, I enjoy life. And most of all, I enjoy the quirky nature that comes with being an entrepreneur. And I choose to be in a good mood. Regardless of how beat up I am, I, I choose that path. And in 2011, I'd like to challenge all of you to do the same. Thank you very much for coming today. I wish you all continued success. If there's ever anything that I can do, for you. If you ever want to pick my brain, just give me a call. I'm glad to help. 
Um, stay active within Biz Starts Milwaukee and continue to support this wonderful organization. Um, happy holidays and have a great day.